We are now joined by CP, the franchise. And CP, obviously the Knicks were shorthanded, but what warts were exposed in that fourth quarter Saturday night against the Lakers? Unfortunately, you can't win them all, Eamon. But in that fourth quarter, you saw a Lakers two-way master class. On the defensive end, they bottled up Jalen Brunson. They was pretty much sellout blitzing on Brunson. Even when the Knicks were trying to draw the mismatch with Austin Reeves on Jalen Brunson, the Lakers would still send Torian Prince over to double, forcing it out of his hands and making the Knicks supporting cast make plays, which way, which they were unable to do. On the other end, it was the Lakers putting pressure on Jalen Brunson as a defender and really taking taking advantage of his weaknesses, both as an on and off ball defender. Uh, you had Austin Reeves and Torian Prince combined for 23 of the Lakers, 33 points in that fourth quarter. It just wasn't meant to be for the Knicks tonight. Dante DiVincenzo has helped pick up the slack offensively, averaging nearly 27 a game in the last four. But in your eyes, what other adjustments do the Knicks need to make as they continue life without Julius Randle? It's going to be difficult to replicate Julius Randle's offensive production. Dante DiVincenzo has done a great job, and he's even made a case to be the Knicks' long-term starting two guard. But for the Knicks to be able to tread water while Julius Randle is out, they're going to have to do the little things right, taking care of the ball, forcing turnovers, and creating fast-break opportunities. Also, figuring out a way to continue to put pressure on the rim and getting free throw attempts. When Julius Randle was in that Knicks lineup, the Knicks were 10th in the NBA in free throw attempts at about 23.6 over the last four games since he's been out they've been about in the bottom quadrant of the league at about 18.5 so they're going to need to find a way to put some pressure on the rim and get some easy baskets that way cp obviously randall's injury could impact this as well but it's trade deadline week as we are getting closer and closer to 3 p.m thursday afternoon so what do you expect leon rose and the knicks to do this week I think they'll continue to seek a bench upgrade at the guard position. Names that we've continued to hear about, Malcolm Brogdon. Would that be an easier trade to make now that the alleged CAA and Clutch Sports uh, rift has been mended? Uh, Alec Burks, a former Nick with the Detroit Pistons, he's another guy that can provide the Knicks with some instant offense. When you look around the East, Eamon, with the news about Joel Embiid's meniscus tear and surgery and Philadelphia, will, who will seemingly be falling back to the pack, the Knicks have an opportunity to take advantage here. Hopefully they can make a trade deadline splash that will keep them in contention in the East. Yeah, obviously the Embiid news, a major deal in the Eastern Conference. This Tuesday through Thursday at 3, it's the putback with Ian Begley trade deadline special Tuesday. CP joins Ian and Steve Popper of Newsday to set the scene on an important deadline for the Knicks. That's on SNY's YouTube page and social channels. CP, the franchise, thanks as always for joining us on Honda Sports Night. Anytime, Eamon. Thank you.